I've previously built various robot dogs in my channel, and now I've started a new version called Open Dog version 3. I recently took the previous version, Open Dog version 2, to TCT 360 show, and it was good to have more space to walk around in. You can see that this version is quite wobbly though, which is down to only having 5 to 1 belt reductions in each joint. One of the main reasons it works at all is having a low reduction so that the motors can be back driven, creating a virtual spring. But in this version the reduction is so low that it can barely hold its own weight when two legs are off the ground. The new version is based on 10 to 1 ratio cycloidal drives which I developed over the course of several videos in my channel. These are also back drivable so that we can dynamically adjust the response like a virtual spring, but we also have the ability to tighten up the joints a lot more to make them more rigid when required. In the last video I built the majority of the mechanical assembly including assembling 12 cycloidal drives for the three axes in each of the four legs. So now it's time to install the electronics which requires several new 3D printed parts for mounting everything. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. To control all the brushless motors I'm using 6 O-Drive 3.6s and this is the 56 volt version, so the O-Drive will control the brushless motor and do position and velocity control. I should mention that O-Drive Pro has been announced which is a single axis board and that also has the Hall Effect sensor encoder built in so that would fit right on the back of the gearbox and save a lot of space in the body of the robot. But unfortunately it's not actually available yet so for now I'm going to use standard O-Drives. The O-Drive uses an encoder attached to the motor to control position and velocity but as well as that it uses the encoder so it can energise the brushless motor phases at the right time. I've previously used incremental encoders with O-Drives, which generally involved running a calibration cycle before the motor could be powered up. If the encoder also has an index pulse which occurs once in each revolution, then the calibration could be saved so that the motor only need pass the index pulse once on power up, and then the O-Drive knows what the offset is between the encoder and the motor stator so it can control the motor effectively. This worked okay, but sometimes there were still some weird issues. In the newest firmware though, the O-Drive now supports some absolute position encoders with an SPI interface, so once the encoder calibration is carried out once, the O-Drive can just power up the motor and go straight into closed loop control on every subsequent power up. So this is going to make powering up the 12 axes significantly easier. Before wiring up the SPI pins on 12 encoders I thought I should do a test so I got my test cycloidal drive from the development with the AS5047 encoder on the back and one O-Drive axis and you can see as soon as I issue the command it goes into closed loop control. I fitted my O-Drives into these 3D printed cages so it's easy to get to all the connectors. There were some issues in OpenDog 2 with actually getting to things if there was a problem like one of the connectors came out. So you can see I can get to all the connectors all the way around there and it's a pretty open cage. As you'd expect those fit into the big gaps in the side of the robot so there's lots of space there and those can hinge down so they're accessible. And all I've done is just made holes in them basically that fit halfway around the carbon fibre tube and those are zip tied on at the bottom and eventually they'll be zip tied on at the top or attached with velcro. It's time to apply some power so I've got the same battery from OpenDog2 which is a 6 cell LiPo at 4000 milliamp hour and as usual I'm using 8 millimeter bolts to distribute the power. So I've got some more eyelets on proper silicon cables that go to all the O drives. Eventually I'll build a cover for that so we don't drop metal in it and short everything out but for now it fits neatly in the middle and the power's distributed out nicely to the O-Drives. Now the O-Drives have the USB port on the top, which is where the power is as well, otherwise I'd have put them upside down and run power to the bottom, but I really want that connector to be very easily accessible for any configuration on the O-Drives. I then updated my O-Drive firmware, which is very important if you want to try out O-Drives, and you can use the O-Drive tool, which is a Python script, 
using odrive tool dfu and it puts it into programming mode and goes and flashes the latest firmware from odrive so i've done that with all six of them now they're powered up but we can't control the motors without encoders on the back so i'm using the ams as5047 encoder which is an absolute position encoder and works in spi mode the boards come with a big jumper on which you need to take off so you can actually use it and so i've hard jumpered to 3.3 volt and moved r1 over to r2 which is a zero ohm resistor that basically means shorting it out I've used 6 core foil shielded cable for this and I've also built little strain reliefs for each of the cables and they're actually glued into the cable on another 3D printed block so it doesn't pull on the solder connections. Probably could have done with a connector here but for now just soldering them on will do. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is Brilliant. Brilliant is a website and app built off the principle of active problem solving, because it takes more to learn something than just watching it. Just like me building robot dogs, to really learn about something, you have to do it. Brilliant has recently increased the interactivity on their platform to a new level, and they're continuing to improve their courses to add more interactivity to them. For instance, the pre-algebra course is for people who've struggled with mathematics in the past or just want to refresh it if it's been a while since they've done anything maths related. This course helps you learn about factorization by arranging squares into rectangles and seeing things arranged visually and interacting with them helps you understand mathematics much more easily. So it's really not just about memorising or regurgitating facts for a test. You can pick a course you're interested in and get started, and if you get stuck or make a mistake, you can read the explanations to find out more and learn at your own pace. If you'd like to join me and a community of 8 million learners and educators today, click the link in the video description below or visit brilliant.org slash James Bruton. Right, time to get back to this robot dog. So the encoders fit on the back of the motors and you can see the red block there with a the magnet mounted in which doesn't actually contact the chip but of course with that big jumper that was there there's no chance of it working at all which is why you have to remove it. So having fitted all of those and wired up all of the motors so we've got 12 motors each with 3 wires and 12 encoders each with 7 wires so there's quite a lot of soldering to do there and quite a lot of wiring to get this project up and running. Eventually I'll probably make a cover for the outside of the O-Drive cage, but for now you can see all that cable's kind of neatly inside, it's a bit hectic, so I really could have benefited from the O-Drive Pro, where we could have just put those on the back of the motor. And for now I've wired all of the pins onto some strip board, with some right angle pin strip going into the O-Drive so I can make a breakout, could probably do with a custom PCB there as well, but for now that will probably do. For now I'm going to use the Everything remote which is also the OpenDog 2 remote but eventually I'll build a new one for this one in the right colours. OpenDog 2 remote's a bit worn out and held together with an elastic band. Thanks to Cool Components for sponsoring the electronics for this project. Check out coolcomponents.co.uk for all of your Teensy and Arduino and electronics and robotic needs. I've built this on some Cool Components Perma Proto board and the main microcontroller is a Teensy 4.1. I've also got an LCD on this version as well as the MPU6050 inertial measurement unit and the NRF radio chip that I use in a lot of projects. And I've got a level matcher there for the LCD because it's 5 volts and the Teensy's 3. I've implemented a rudimentary menu where I can scroll through different options with up and down buttons on the remote and then select them to confirm them. I also have various other features including the motor enable and disable and also it tells me if the remote is connected or not connected. All of that is fitted into a 3D printed box and I've wired in six serial ports and I'm still using serial although O-Drive support CAN bus but I don't really understand how to use it and I like the Arduino serial Arduino library. There's a battery and a power supply in there and also a connector to take all of the wires out which means I can completely remove the electronics and run them independently. There's a lid that fits on top which has the LCD on and a power switch on the side so the whole thing powers and operates independently of the dog. And there's no buttons on top for members of the public to press. Apart from the one button that anyone should ever press which is the emergency stop and that resets all the O drives and kills all the motors. I've also got two voltmeters on the back there for the main battery and the electronics battery. All my serial lines are connected to the other half of the D-range connector, should probably put a hood on there at some point but for now there isn't one, and those are all wired into the O-drives. So now the powering up process looks like going from joints which aren't powered up at all, to one button press on the remote, 
which powers up all the joints and makes them rigid. So that's much easier than before. And then when I press the E stop, it cuts all the joints off and they go back to being powered down. So now it can stand on its own four legs and we can test how robust it's likely to be. There is a tiny amount of backlash in each gearbox, but actually here we're mostly back driving the motor, the O-drive is compensating, trying to hold its position, and so we get a virtual spring. I'm actually only running the axis on half as much current, on 15 amps instead of 30 amps that I was running on OpenDog 2, so hopefully they won't overheat as easily, but we can see that it's much more robust. Now there is a bit of wobble, and that's just the natural spring in the joints, so this is going to make it quite dynamic, and that's one of the reasons that these robot dogs work at all. I'd really like to try and tune that dynamically though, and I did some testing with some test legs in the past, so that we can use the inertial measurement unit to try and keep it upright by softening up legs on one side and firming them up on the other side. And we've now of course we've got more potential to firm the legs up, because we've got twice the reduction and potentially twice the torque we could use. But overall I think that's going to be pretty reliable, and really good for doing force controlled experiments, and lots of things that I couldn't do with the previous model, because it only barely walked. So I'm pretty happy with that, it feels quite robust and it feels like we've got much more torque in those joints and we should have because we've got a 10 to 1 ratio instead of a 5 to 1 ratio although I'm only running the motors on half the current, they're only on 15 amps instead of 30 amps. There's still some motor parameter tuning to do on the O-drive as we get it walking, but it's feeling like it's going to be much more controllable. There is a bit of backlash in those gearboxes introduced with the cycloidal drives, which we didn't have in the previous one because they were very tight belt drives, but we do have twice as much torque. And of course I've made, I think, what is a viable 3D printed dog with all of the gearboxes 3D printable, and the entire thing is open source, including of course the O-drive motor driver, which is open source as well. So it should be quite easy to adapt and make your if you wanted to. Now I'm not going to publish the Cadden code just yet until I've actually got it to walk, but it is going to be an open source project that will be on GitHub with all my other projects. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then those links are in the description below. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early, as well as sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up. Next time I'm going to work through the inverse kinematic model, and hopefully getting it doing at least a rudimentary walk. So don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you liked it, and check back next time.